Jonathan, we set? Good. I want to welcome you to the second carcinoid neuroendocrine conference held here in New Jersey. Uh, it's a pretty amazing event. I do have a few opening remarks. Let me just start here quickly. Uh, oh, no, not that much. Okay. I was going to get the fan fold sheet. A um, couple of things. I want to go over first some miscellaneous things. A couple of you have noticed a black lab masquerading as a zebra wandering around. Um, where is she anyway? Ollie. Where'd she go? Uh, she might be outside. Okay, yes, um, they do that. Uh, that's Ollie. She's a service dog. Uh, if you're not familiar with service dogs, uh, she decided to fill in as our zebra mascot, but if you're not familiar with service dogs, there's some information in your handout packet on what to do, what not to do with them. The biggest thing is, is if you want to talk to the dog, talk to the person first, and it's tacky to ask, why do you have a service dog? But that is my wife, and I do have to thank her. Um, there's a lot of information in the handout packets. It's been strewn all over our house for about three weeks now. Uh, Phyllis is here. She helped put it all together on Wednesday. Uh, some of the items in your packets have more than one thing on them, so just check and make sure there's some stuff on the bottom, like stupid little reminders like, don't forget tonight to set your clocks back an hour. You can sleep that extra hour, you know, or at least make you feel that way for it. Um, let me get to the business stuff. I want to thank everybody who helped make this work. There's a lot of people here. Mike and Judy Goltz. This is Mike. This is Judy. Tom and Kathy Mazza. Uh, Linda and Paul Guger, who you met outside at registration. Phyllis DiGeronimo in the back there, who wound up at my house um, helping put stuff together. I want to thank their families for putting up with this. Uh, Bar uh, Judy's had baskets at her house how many weeks now? <laughs> Ready to go for this. Uh, Important thing for Carsonoid Conference, restrooms are out the door and keep making lefts around the concierge desk and they're right there. Uh, we've added something that's especially useful for carcinoid patients. You'll recognize it when you walk in. Um, also, as you walked in, you might have noticed there's a copy, an enlarged copy of a signed proclamation from Governor Christie. Uh, he declared November Neuroendocrine Tumor and Carcinoid Cancer Month for the state of New Jersey. I have to thank Mike Lax for that. He's the one who put that together since I think April it took or something uh, to get that done. Uh, also on the side table standing up is a proclamation for Worldwide Neuroendocrine Tumor Awareness Day. If you, wanted, if you could just sign that, we're going to use that for some promotion stuff later on. Uh, in your packets, you'll find a feedback survey. You know, if you didn't take it apart and dissect it like I always do, it's the second sheet down right behind the agenda. Please, I ask if you could. I mean, I really know they're a pain to do, but we need the information on those to be able to fill out stuff and to apply for other grants. I have to thank Novartis Oncology Patient Relations for a really generous grant, but I also have to report to them so we can get more <laughs> for future events. So that helps us with that. Also, if each person could fill one out, not just one, and you'll see there's a thing on there, are you a patient, are you a caregiver, or whatever. We want to see if there's any difference between the patient and the caregiver. It's anonymous. We're not comparing somebody, and I certainly don't know any of you well enough to say, oh, that's so-and-so's handwriting, I know that. Okay. Okay, uh, to be able to do that. So if each person could fill them out as the day goes on, we'll have a box at the end of the day. You can put them out on your way out. And like I say, they're anonymous. We want to know the good. We want to also know the bad. How can we make this better? We want to know what impressed you. We want to know what disturbed you as well. Um, I want to thank um, everybody who's here with this. We're Cindy. Where'd she go? Stand up, please. Okay. There's a number. Her glasses are dark, so she was outside with Ollie. Okay. That's Cindy. Okay. I have to thank her for letting me continue this. I know there were a lot of people who said, he got married. Uh-oh. <laughs> Guess what? She's on board with this. Uh, she already got an A on a paper on neuroendocrine tumors. I wonder how that happened <laughs> for something. Uh, we are holding a raffle today. Uh, tickets are limited. We got one roll of tickets. We figured, oh, that's plenty. The bottom line is we're going to wind up limiting it to that one roll. They're going fast. It's a dollar a ticket or $5 for 10. Uh, we're going to be having a raffle during lunchtime. You must be present to win. There's some rules, things in there, if you know that. But the tickets are unlimited. Uh, today we've got some of the best speakers on carcinoid and neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, giving you a glimpse into this, is a, it's a complex world, yet often misunderstood. And our goal today is to let you learn from that. Uh, we all know the significance of September 11th, 2001. How many people here know the significance of November 11th, 2001? Judy, <laughs> Kelly, come on, Kelly. What's that? What is that date? Uh, it's the 10th, but that's okay. 2001. Okay, there's a c handful of people in this room who know that. That was the first meeting of the New Jersey Carcinoid Group. Ten years behind us. 
10 years in a couple of days. It's pretty amazing. The amazing thing is there were 11 people who met that day, and those 11 people formed an amazing bond that is just not going to be duplicated someplace else. More than half of those people are here today. So, I mean, I think that's just phenomenal right there. Most doctors have limited knowledge and experience with a rare disease like neuroendocrine tumors and carcinoid. It's not to take away from their vast knowledge. They know a lot of stuff. They just don't know how to deal with this disease. Real experts in this disease are not as common. And I say real experts. There's some of them out there who claim to be. Uh, some of the best experts are gathered here today to talk, but their wingspan's limited. They don't get to see every patient as much as we would like that. Dr. Warner and his late wife, Monica, saw the need for the patient support groups 10 years ago or more, and they helped with the Carcinoid Cancer Foundation of New York of White Plains to sow the seeds to start the first three viable support groups that became in the United States, Washington, D.C. area, California, and the Metro New York area. Those three groups still continue. Their seed has sprouted up dozens of others across the country many of them with the help of the Carcinoid Cancer Foundation. I gotta say, as a group leader, I get annoyed at some of these support group leaders who forget where they came from, and they forget where that started. Uh, the European model for neuroendocrine tumor care, it's kind of lacking in a patient element. There are not that many support groups. It's a very, patient support is very, very weak in Europe. The doctors are pretty well organized. In the United States, the doctors here, it's only in the last few years that they're becoming more organized, and they're doing a very good job of that. Neuroendocrine tumors um, in Europe, again, patients, they're just kind of ignored, uh, so to speak. Pardon me while I change pages. We're lucky that we have, we don't have to live behind that curtain of, of secrecy or of mystery. Our doctors here are willing to share that information with us, to share knowledge with us. With the recent passing of Steve Jobs, there's been a lot of speculation and a media frenzy over what did Steve Jobs do? What did he do wrong? What did he do right? We'll never know the answer to that. His case is pri personal. His case is individual. It's private. I like to keep it private for him. I understand that. But I also have to wonder, if he came to an event like this, what would it have changed? Would it have changed what he did? Would it have changed his outlook? We're here today to exercise your freedom to make your own choices. Informed choices, that's the key, informed choices. You have the ability to become your own advocate, to direct your own care. It's not black and white, it's not easy. If it was, anybody could do it. But with the information, it makes it a lot easier. The doctors have the charts, the experts know how to read them. But the ship is yours, you get to sail it. If you wanna run it up on the rocks, you can, but if you want to steer it into the deep water, you can come and learn so that you can help read those charts and help to understand some of that, become the captain of your own ship, your own choices, and like I say, informed choices. Our goal here today is to provide you with the best possible information for your disease, to give you the newest options, the latest treatments, the diagnostics, to empower you to understand some of those charts and to make educated decisions for your big care, for your best outcome. So let me get on with what's going on here today, the real reason you're here, because you didn't come here to listen to me talk, I can tell you that, okay? I didn't come here to listen to me talk. Let me turn you over to Judy, and she's gonna make the first introduction. Good morning, it's so nice to see everybody, and it's nice to see the faces with all the people that I've talked to, so welcome. I, like most of you, was misdiagnosed for many years. When I wound up by luck and pure coincidence at Mount Sinai for exploratory surgery, carcinoid was not even on the radar. My surgeon woke me up and gave me the good news, bad news scenario. The good news is that one, and I quote, one of the world specialists that deals exclusively with carcinoid happened to be here at Mount Sinai. That was Dr. Richard Warner. What I didn't realize then and I realize now is just how lucky I was. I saw Dr. Warner even before leaving the hospital. So when he came to my room, I knew I was in good hands. Dr. Warner has touched many and most of us in this room, as well as thousands of others directly or indirectly. The son of devoted physicians, he grew up to be a doctor and diagnosed his first case of carcinoid in 1950. And it happened to be a lung carcinoid. He then, um, while he was serving in the Air Force, 
He then diagnosed another shortly thereafter and learned to do his own 5-HIA testing because the only lab available was in Texas. He has devoted his entire career and life to carcinoid and neuroendocrine tumors. He is respected and revered by most of his, by all of his colleagues. However, that was not always the case. Dr. Warner took on a disease that most physicians, even today, consider rare and benign. He has brought carcinoid to the forefront, both nationally and internationally, yet he remains a sincere and humble physician. Dr. Warner worked with yttrium-90 microspheres as early as 1960 to treat carcinoid tumors, and even though it showed great promise, surprise, surprise, 3A, 3M pulled it from the market because they didn't feel that it was cost-effective to produce. He has developed many of the protocols that we have and use today. I have been fortunate to know him both personally and professionally. Along with his wife, Monica, they created and ran the Carcinoid Cancer Foundation that has helped so many of us. Dr. Warner has exclusively dedicated himself to carcinoid and neuroendocrine tumors for over 50 years. Not only does he have expertise of this disease, but he has a strong instinct as well. He has saved many lives and, more importantly, has allowed us to have quality of life and to live with this disease. Dr. Warner shared with me that his philosophy in treating patients has been the words of Will Rogers. There are no strangers in life, only friends that I haven't met yet. It is my great pleasure to introduce you to our carcinoid guru, Dr. Richard Warner. <laughs>